feature presentation. Welcome back to another Untitled Movie Podcast. I am one of your hosts alongside, he's just a hater boy. He said, see you later, boy. Eric Marchin. Matt, uh, it's it's my brat summer, whatever that <laughs> it's, means. It's I don't your, know. Yeah, yeah. You are being a brat this summer. Uh, Eric, how are you doing? I'm good, Matt. I'm good. I, I'm actually kind of excited to have this conversation just because it's been a couple days now since we've seen a couple days, a few days uh, since we've seen Alien Romulus. And sometimes it's good to kind of let things sort of uh, digest before they burst out of your chest, uh, you know, with your sure. critical response. Uh, but I think it's it's an interesting conversation to have because it seems to be more polarizing than I was expecting it to. There's a lot of people that love it. Mm-hmm. There are people that hate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but in either case, it's very passionate. It's you know, the last Jedi of alien movies. So. It's not, though. It's more The Force Awakens. <laughs> yeah, it I really know, is I know. The, the greatest hits you but know, I mean, from a polarizing standpoint, I think yes. we can get into the details of we will compare it to Force Awakens and things like that, because um, I, I do agree with that. But yes, today we are uh, reviewing Fede Alvarez's Alien Romulus, which is now playing in cinemas everywhere. Um, we're going to do this uh, spoiler free at the beginning. So Eric and I, which you probably if you've seen our tweets or what we just alluded to of that polarizing reaction, you'll kind of get a sense of how we both feel on the movie. Um, But we're going to give our spoiler free thoughts and then we'll be very clear on when we move over to spoiler territory, because I feel like this is a movie that especially with some of the criticisms and and that kind of reaction of some of the the big swings it takes. Um, uh, I think you need to talk about them and I think it'll just be I, I think we'll have a better conversation in that spoiler part. So again, we don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but so we'll be very clear when we are going to move to spoilers, but we're we will start with spoiler free thoughts. Um Eric, we always like to start these big like franchise reviews with like kind of our history kind of with the franchise. And I think we've even professionally reviewed two movies. At least I've reviewed two. You might I think we've both only reviewed two movies with, with yeah, Prometheus, Prometheus and Alien, and, Alien Covenant. Yeah. So, um, and it's a franchise we both, I think, really love. I think you even more so than me. But, like, I think we both just recently saw the first Alien film um, at Tiff Bell Lightbox together. That was a fun experience. Um, probably the best way we could possibly see that movie. The first time I think I'd seen it in a theater um we recently i think not recently but like uh might have been five years ago now i don't know how time works but we we did an alien marathon i remember watching alien aliens alien 3 i don't know if we got the resurrection or if we only got up to alien 3, i think we but, skipped resurrection yeah <laughs> I, but we did watch the trilogy like not too long ago so you're this is a review coming from two uh, huge fans. I've we've both seen Alien vs Predator. I've only seen them both once. It was a long ass time ago. But um, I just wanted to kick it back over to you because I know you'll be passionate in this in this review. But like your you really like Alien is is one of your franchises, right? You love it. Yeah, it is, and 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 partly it's because you know, like when you're a kid, you you inherit certain things from um, your parents, and my dad loved uh the alien movies and so that was like one of the better memories i have you know with him as a kid <laughs> where and i'm and I, just being very sincere i'm not trying to be flipping i know or, i know or what I have know. you but um in terms of like the movies that i was introduced to like i remember like alien for me was like one of the first r-rated movies i watched as a kid and it was like oh, you get to be a big boy in this moment. Like you get to see something that maybe you shouldn't be watching yet. But, yeah. you know, you're, 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 one of your parents says, you know what, let's 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 see how you, you know, react to this. And and it was disturbing. I mean, obviously, you know, that scene where John Hurt dies is is like nothing else. And I can't imagine what it would have been like to be there, you know, in that first weekend of, of screenings and watching that. And then you know, it's a slower paced film and, and tonally it doesn't really kind of get going until, 
after uh, that death. But then, you know, you watch Aliens and then that movie plays more as kind of an action thriller. And, you know, you realize that, you know, James Cameron and Gail Ann Hurd, you know, a producer Gail Ann Hurd and, and director James Cameron, like, you know, they're coming off of the, the Terminator and, and they're bringing even people like, you know, Bill Paxton, uh, Michael Bean and Lance Hendrickson into yeah. it. So, you know, it, and, and it's so much fun. And then Alien 3 was the one film I wasn't allowed to watch until I was a little bit older for, I guess, for maybe some of the more... More brutal, I guess. Brutal, like, the rapey stuff in yeah, there, yeah. the the prison planet sort of stuff, and then Alien Three is just a fascinating story into uh, the making of and and um you know from Vince Ward to uh, David Fincher and David Fincher disowning the film and um that being a problem and then the two cuts of the film, and then you get to Alien Resurrection, which you know has a lot of problems starting with uh. Uh, bad man uh joss whedon's uh script which he would always gloat about being like a first draft and that was the only draft he had written and that it wasn't and you're know, like bro maybe off. you should have done a second <laughs> yeah or yeah a third and there is a template of like the firefly or, or, or yeah firefly characters in that narrative with the with that crew um but it's also very pretentious in that kind of french way that jean-pierre genet directs certain things like you have uh the clone version of ripley you know leaving her kind of like sack and like i can just see jean-pierre genet be like no it's like you're being you're, you're like the caterpillar that is becoming a butterfly and you're coming out <laughs> of it and it's just like it's like that kind of um you know pretension that you know it's a little bit off-putting and it's also obnoxious at times like I remember renting it and watching it uh, at my grandparents' place, and my grandfather was sitting with us, and every other line was, fuck this, fuck that, and it's almost like a Rob Zombie movie in that way, yeah, and, and yeah. my grandfather was like, what is this? Sure. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and then with Alien vs. Predator, like, it was exciting. We don't even need to talk about those, but yeah, it, yeah. I, I, they're barely part of this franchise. No. Well, but Lance yeah. Hendrickson's in the first, is in yeah. Alien vs. Predator as, as Wayland, and um, but the the timeline, the continuity of that is kind of strange as and well. That's why and, I don't know if it like technically counts because then you have Guy Pierce and, and Prometheus as well, yeah. right? And Who's, then, well, and... well, that's a, that's a conversation in itself because the Ridley Scott movies, Alien, because in Alien there's a deleted scene where Ripley finds Dallas and Dallas has been you know hung on the wall by the alien and impregnated by the alien, and he mm-hmm. says to Ripley, "Kill me." Mm-hmm. which is something that actually comes back up in aliens. Uh, and so with alien Prometheus and alien covenant, the one thing that Ridley Scott has never acknowledged that James Cameron brought to the table is the queen alien, which I find mm-hmm. very interesting. And we'll talk about this movie more. And so, cause there's a lot of idea, uh, idealizing the canon of the alien quadrilogy, um, and then also Prometheus and Covenant to a lesser extent, more so Prometheus, but yeah. Covenant kind of has a little, there's some shadings in there. Um, <clears throat> so when you're watching something like this, you think to yourself, you know, like it's exciting to see that Fede Alvarez is directing the movie, especially, you know, after, you know, not having the greatest success with the uh, girl who kicked the hornet's nest uh, but don't breathe felt like you know okay he's applying certain aspects of that narrative that he worked on to this as a heist movie he's kind of changing it a little bit in terms of the demographic so we have a younger cast that way it feels more almost like a 90s slasher flick in a little in certain yeah. ways um and, and so there's 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 interesting dynamics there and then the first act i think There are elements of that first act, especially the production design, sound design, that work. And it's right around, I'm not spoiling anything because it's in the trailers and promotional material. But I think once you get the face huggers involved, that's where things start to really pile up on the uh, logic flaws, Mm -hmm. the underdeveloped characters. And, you know, again... I like The Force Awakens, and that is J.J. Abrams as the company man doing the 
you know, I'm going to remind you why you love Star Wars so much. Yeah, yeah. Vader Alvarez does the same thing, but my problem with this movie is that I mean, there's there's a big ethical issue that we'll get into, but my problem with with you know piling one reference or you know homage or or visual you know cue is that after a while it feels like that's all there is like there's not anything else to kind of dilute or or make you kind of involved in these new characters like at least with the force awakens and last jedi say what you will about rise of skywalker um you know within that greatest hits you were being introduced to new characters that you were kind of fascinated by and wanted to get to know like you wanted to know more about ray you know who ray is as you go along you get to know a little bit more about finn and poe and their journeys as well you know mixing in with the old characters and and the iconography there um with this like i was actually struggling when i was writing my rogers review and and i had to look it up certain characters names other than Uh, that's a uh, problem that i always have because i just have a shitty brain but yeah but 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 some of these characters within the canon of these films are so iconic yeah andy's the only one that you're really gonna remember and yeah and andy's the only reason why i remember andy's name off the top of my head i think david johnson's excellent in the film and he's like the one kind of shining star in, in in the movie is because I kept thinking about Toy Story because there's a line sure. that's brought up that he's like a toy. Well, I just and thought Andy the, Andy the Android was very on the Which nose. Which is also, yes, yes, yeah. yes. But but even with, with Kaylee Spaney, I was like, what was her name again? Rain. Rain. You know, and then the other characters you don't remember at no, all. No, no, no. They're all set dressing. But um, yeah, I mean, I'll jump in quickly and I'll, we'll go back and forth. But, um, you know, while you're having a brat summer, I'm having a Chapel Roan summer, Eric, and I'm going to spread some positivity. <laughs> all right. So um, much like you, huge fan of the Alien franchise, um, scared the shit out of me as as a kid. I think the, you know, those first two films are some of the best sci-fi horror, sci-fi action movies of all time. Um, so different, but similar at the same time. Um, I just absolutely love those first two films. Um, and I won't say much more cause you've already kind of covered it. Um, I even kind of like alien three as well because of, you know, uh, it, it's really dark and, and, and weird. And, and, you know, I like that history with Fincher directing it and, and dropping the movie. And then you kind of get his cut, but it's not really put together by him. And, um, and then even resurrection, which I don't remember much, but I remember being kind of underwhelmed by, and then, AVP, both of them, I barely remember. I just remember the second one being very over the top and brutal, but and dark, uh, hard to see. Yeah, and then um, I love. I think we're both Prometheus defenders. Like we, I, I loved Prometheus for being different, but still being in that universe and kind of showing some of the backstory. And you know, while I think over explanation uh, and lore drops of, of things that you maybe it was cooler when you didn't know a lot about them. I, I still like a lot of Prometheus. I don't like the big rubber boys, uh, but I still like, and there's a lot of logic issues in that movie as well, but sometimes, you know, it's a fucking movie. I just, I take it for what it is. And then um, with Covenant, I don't remember much from it. I remember being underwhelmed, but liking a lot of the David stuff, um, like with the flute and like well, David shit. and Walter. Yeah, right? and yeah, and Walter. Yeah, like I liked I liked a lot of that stuff because it was very weird and and um, but the rest of it surrounding it, I, I felt kind of underwhelmed by. Um, so going into this, I was looking forward to it. I like Fede Alvarez. I like Don't Breathe a lot. I liked his Evil Dead remake. Um, his sequel to Dragon Tattoo was fine. Um, I think he's a, a good filmmaker. Um, and I think from a technical standpoint, um, a very good one. And so everything I saw going into this, I was, I was pretty stoked for it. People comparing it being, you know, a hybrid of alien and aliens and, and kind of having, you know, that middle ground between being, you know, horror sci-fi and horror action and things like that. I like the cast. Um, and overall, like I, I, I vibed with the movie. I think it does have some issues, which I will agree with you on a lot of those points, but I think for the most part, um, from a technical standpoint, I think the movie, 
um, is spectacular. I love the practical sets. I love the mix of visual and special effects. I think they blend really well. The puppetry, the animatronics, the like lighting, the just the overall atmosphere. I think they absolutely nailed in the movie, especially because those first two movies have such a distinct kind of vibe and look to them. And I think they modernized it with still feeling classic, like those movies, like it, 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 you had modern filmmaking techniques mixed with some of those classic elements you got in those movies. And I think it made for a really, really great atmosphere and look throughout the whole movie. Uh, I think for the most part, very simple plot and, and very, straightforward story for the most part um but i was engaged throughout i don't think if anything was necessarily spectacular but um i was always entertained like i i don't disagree with you that the characters aren't memorable or they're just kind of you know flat and like i really do like andy and i, I agree with you david johnson's really really great there's a couple set pieces that are good yeah maybe some of the deaths are underwhelming or feel like they, you know, built up and just kind of happen and, and, and things like that. But um, I was really, really into the movie up until maybe the halfway point, maybe three quarters of the way through or, or into the third act. Um, and I think the movie kind of loses me. I appreciate the big swing and I understand that what they introduce in that final act is, is, is supposed to be, um, like, like fucked up and, and an abomination. But like, I just, I, I really didn't like where it went in the last act. I didn't like what they introduced. I felt like it kind of fell apart near the end. Um, but overall, I still think it was a, a thoroughly entertaining, fun, kind of ride that from a technical standpoint i think looks and sounds really really great um and then some of the callbacks um which we'll get into as well i just i felt like we're unnecessary and fan servicey in the bad way not in the fun way like there can be a fun way of paying fan service and like um and i'm trying to dance around stuff because we will get into spoilers but i just wanted to and I'll let you bounce back over because you kind of gave your thoughts of how you feel, but you can go a little bit harder. But um, I overall think like it's definitely worth seeing in a theater. If you're a fan, just to see your own opinion on it. Um, Cause I do think it is going to be that divisive kind of movie. I think it's not a, it might be a love it or hate it kind of movie, but um, I don't know if I necessarily loved it. I am somewhere in the middle, but it is a, mixed positive like i did really enjoy it i don't know why someone's knocking on my door right now while i'm trying to do something it's, it's the that's xenomorph okay. so he's, eric, he's, he's like hey can i can i come and so that's my thoughts i'm gonna answer my door me. eric you you go ahead yeah absolutely um so i think because i liked the first act so much and i love the franchise as a whole i had such a strong negative reaction to the things that didn't work and it's not just simply because it's backloaded like i think the final act which kind of throws a lot of the quote-unquote new stuff at you although i don't think it's all that new honestly especially yeah. with referencing prometheus um, and what Prometheus does, I think, is more interesting in terms of challenging theology and being almost like an yeah, HP having something Lovecraft. to say. Yeah. Well, being almost like an HP Lovecraft story and saying there is no God. You know, yeah. the, the God that made but that's you a stance is I mean, a man, yeah. right? And that and, and that relationship that David has to, you know, the crew of the Prometheus with even uh, Logan Marshall Green's character saying like, you know. Uh, what's the question that you would like to ask your makers? And it's like, well, why did, why did you make us? And, you know, David asked that question and, and he, Logan Marshall Green says, well, because we could. And then David's response is like, could you imagine if you got that same answer, how disappointing that would be. Um, and so like things like that, I think are interesting in Prometheus that challenge not only, you know, the, the, the franchise as a whole, but also, you know, the, anybody going into this that has, uh, a religious background or faith-based background in terms of telling you that like, oh, maybe there is no God and maybe you know, we were created by these rubber daddies. <laughs> and and so um, like, I think that's interesting. And unfortunately they pivoted quite a bit with even Alien Covenant because I don't think that's necessarily what they wanted to do, what Ridley Scott wanted to do narratively. Um, 
and like you said, like I, I like Fede Alvarez. I think he is a lot like JJ Abrams where, you know, outside of don't breathe, I don't feel like I really know him in terms of like his own style because everything he's done other than don't breathe is another like you remake know, or sequel popular. Or, yeah. You know. Reimagining or reboot of another popular franchise or series. And so with Don't Breathe, it felt like, okay, like we're getting something that is somewhat original or a twist on, you know, uh, a, a single location movie. And um, what I liked about that first act that's very similar to Alien is that it takes its time to build to the the, the haunted house of horrors, you know, spacecraft. Even Aliens points. does that as well. Like, it's not an hour in until you get a xenomorph. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and what's also clever about this, because it is a heist movie, like, usually heist films, like, you look at even, you know, the Steven Soderbergh uh, Oceans movies, and it usually takes time to assemble a crew, right? Like, you have two characters maybe thinking, like, oh, we're going to need a locksmith, or we're going to need, you know, someone that's good with uh, computers. And, and so, you know, you'll have, like, a montage of, you know, them assembling the team. And what they do here, or you know, what 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 Fade does as a co-writer, it, he basically says, okay, well, all these characters are going to kind of know each other already. We don't need to, you know, spend that much time on you know assembling that team, and yeah. so that familiar aspect feels like okay, like maybe we're going to get some real depth here in terms of those emotional connections, and 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 they'll make you care about what happens to the characters when they're in peril. Because I think when you care about somebody that's in danger, it makes it all the more immersive and scary. Yeah, of course, yeah. And, and also just, you know, like if something bad happens to somebody you like, even if they're not like that deeply written, there's still something there. Like you look at aliens, like, you know, when, when horrible things happen to those characters, um, especially in the ambush sequence, you're like, oh, that's a shame that these characters win. And then when you have kind of like the final confrontation, uh, you know, you care what happens to Bill Paxton or William Hope or Jeanette Goldstein. Like, yeah, I think like, it's just because they were fun characters, not necessarily. Like, but they're underwritten know. as well. But, yeah, but that's there's what I something mean, but, about them yeah. that you spend enough time getting to know them, even if their personalities are you know, cutting corners in terms of like, this is this type of character and this is this type of character. And, and I really love the, the switch of, of Burke and Corman in terms of those characters being, you know, starting at one point and then becoming something else. And so like those simple things make you actually interested in who these people are outside of knowing you know, Kaylee Spaney in Civil War and Bad Times at the El Royale and Priscilla. I like her as an actor. Rain as a character has this kind of half-hearted emotional arc of losing her parents in this mining colony and, you know, the idea of her wanting to you know escape and get travel permits and and go to this other planet and you know start again start fresh and you know her brother synthetic person uh andy you know and and, and her boyfriend none of that really feels you know all that much in terms of an emotional investment i think the closest thing that you have here is that the whalen yutani corporation in terms of how it owns people yeah. is more sympathetic and you do like the fact that like none of these characters are you know they're not trying to steal money they're not trying to rip anybody off it's not like don't breathe where you know these people are trying to have a better life but at the same time before we know who the blind man is you kind of feel bad for that character in the situation that he's the mark where the mark is the corporation. So, you know, it's not hard to feel somewhat sympathetic or empathetic to what these characters are doing, trying to steal cryo chambers mm -hmm. like that, I think works because it's like, Oh yeah. Like I totally, I'm totally with them. I'm not siding with this company that is extending sure, your, yeah. you know, your, your, your time with them and, and cheating you and, and, and um, you know, robbing you of your life. 
Um, so that I think also really works quite well. It's once you get into the action beats and once the film becomes aliens, when it kind of speeds up the pace, that's where you're hit again and again and again and again with, you know, logic flaws are one thing. Suspension of disbelief. It's like, okay, I can, I, it's a movie. It's, yeah, whatever. It's a movie. Yeah. It's science fiction film, what have you. I'm yeah. sure there's somebody that could. There's a fucking alien creature running around. Like, yeah. okay, whatever. Who cares? But then you also have a lot of the. Uh, those those references, those calls, callbacks, the fanboy, you know, uh, visuals that add on to that. And then you have the thing that we'll talk about. We'll get into spoilers with, in a yeah, sec. Yeah, yeah, After you wrap up your uh... and 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 those all of those things together really start to weigh on it. And I felt like the like each movie. What I liked about the the, the original quadrilogy is that you had a different director for each one and each director had their own unique style in the same way that before Christopher, Christopher McQuarrie yeah. comes aboard mission, mission impossible, impossible yeah. you had each director kind of bringing in a little bit of their own style and, and there was some signature there. And so with this, it's like, Oh yeah. Like fade a makes sense. I will say before we get into spoilers and this isn't a negative to the film, even though I don't like the movie, um, I, I think the fun answer is someone like David Cronenberg or Gore Verbinski would be great choices to direct a movie like this. Yeah. But I think the thoughtful answer and the answer or the choice is like, why hasn't a woman? Yeah, I thought that too. These? And there's so many great women that have directed great horror movies. And But it doesn't even have to be a woman and... that's directed a horror movie. I know, movie but Ridley, I just mean Ridley like. Ridley Scott didn't. Like That's true. Before Alien, he directed The Duelist, and some executive at, at Fox was like, let's get that guy to direct it. So I don't think it necessarily has to be someone that has had I know, a I just mean background. someone who's made a brutal kind of... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, but yeah, the idea of, of the violation of the human body, you know, by... Uh, an organism you know yeah. the, the rape allegory that's going on there but also birth and mm -hmm. you know death and rebirth and things like that it's just like yeah well 45 years this franchise has been around for now and not one woman has directed i agree with that in this no franchise. that that i can agree with so yeah but again that's not a that's not a criticism to this movie that's more so on the franchise the people itself, that are like making the these films yeah, yeah. yeah it's just, it's a, it's an odd choice because like i think a person that if, if we were to go with the whole like somebody that's made something brutal but i don't know if she'd want to do it because i think she's still doing like her own thing is someone like julia de carna i dude i had i just looked her up i was like you know who i was gonna suggest is the exact same thing and i don't know if she'd ever even be interested if she likes alien or whatever but um yeah i i completely agree with something like that too so do you want to get into spoilers or do you want yeah. to just wrap i think it's up? So, i think it's hard not to like I, to pinpoint certain yeah. things that so, don't work i enjoyed the movie eric obviously clearly didn't so you know you i think it's an interesting movie either way at least it gives you something to talk about so if you have any interest in it and you haven't gone to see it yet i still think you should go and and kind of see uh, which vibe you catch. Are you having a brat summer or a Chapel Roan summer? That's the up. bad boy of summer oh, or the yeah. brat of summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll, we won't give our ratings here. You know, I, I, I think we probably actually should, and then we'll yeah. go into spoilers. So I'm giving the movie a three and a half. Um, again, I, I, I don't love some of the choices it makes throughout. I don't like the last act. I do think it's a little derivative, even though I still liked it for that, but um, I'm going to give it a three and a half. I think it's solid. I just uh, uh, have some issues with it. I'm giving it two out of yeah. uh, five. And I also have decided not to give ratings on Letterbox anymore. Uh, oh, okay. So that's a, that's a I'm new still going to do ratings for, for this and for Rogers. Sure. But I just I'm cool like, to get rid of ratings. I'm I, yeah, fine, that's the thing like, where it's like ratings like it, – ultimately it's, it's like the conversation and when you're what your words and yeah. what you're like i agree that like putting a, a number and a score onto it like i don't love it either like i'm totally fine with uh i mean i'll probably still on letterbox for some but I, I could be with you you could convince me not to either but and i'm um, not trying to say like anybody don't you know follow my path it's just more so i'm just like 
like how do you compare and contrast certain things by star ratings? It gets, and, it gets and all movies are different. It's like yeah. judging uh, judging art by scores or or contests is always very strange. And I know we get caught up with it with awards and all this kind of shit. But um, all right, cool. So maybe this will be the last time we ever put a score on something. But well, no, I'm, I'm still down to put scores here. <laughs> here I, I'm just yeah. talking about my letterbox yeah, yeah, account. Yeah. If you go there and see that I'm not putting stars anymore, it's because I'm I'm not. But you can still see these reviews mm-hmm. or listen to them or watch listen them. Listen and get the scores. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And same thing with Rogers, where I still give a letter grade. So it's yeah, you know. you're just all over the place. Um, <laughs> all right. We're going to go into spoilers in three and two and one. Okay. I don't know. I mean, we'll kick it off with the the biggest thing, which I think we can have an interesting conversation about because I'm I, I'm not as upset about it as you and some other people like i'll come at it from a different angle but the biggest i think spoilery thing that is going to be the biggest talking point of the movie um is the resurrection of ian holm uh somehow ian holm has returned um just let the man die he 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 had an amazing fucking career I, i get that i get it i get it so in the movie you have um, uh, uh, basically Ian Holm reprising his role as it's not Ash in this, it's Rook. It's the android that was on the Romulus station. I think from a story standpoint, I sort of understand that it could make sense in the sense that this type of android could still be around. I don't know, however you want to do it. And then you, there's a way of going, okay, in that world, I, I kind of get it, but yes, the grave robbing nature of it, which for the most part, I'm, I'm always against. Um, I think here I'll kick it off, Eric, and then you can go yeah. off on it. Um, here I went to the bathroom and I came back and Ian Holm <laughs> and Ian Holm was on screen and I was very confused, but like, I assumed they were going to do something like that because the Android that they found that was like chopped in half was like face down. I'm like, Oh, it's either probably it. I thought it was going to be Lance Hen- Hendrickson, which we'll get into it, but um, it ends up being Ian Holm. And I see this, you know, uh, CGI face talking to them. And I, uh, I don't hate it in the world for many of the reasons I just said. I don't even hate it for the performance and how it looks as much as other people do because, like, it is an android. So the kind of uncanny valley creepiness of it all, I don't mind for an android that's about, like, that's basically chopped in half and creepy. And, and you know, I, I think it brought an unsettling nature to it. And then my other thing is, like, if it serves the story and the family signs off on it, I'm not as upset about it because who am I to say like, and I get he doesn't have quote unquote a say because he's dead, but we don't know what conversations were had with his family. We don't know what was in his will. We don't know any of that. It's such like a personal thing. We don't know at what point in their lives, that it, like where his family is at and all these kinds of different things, but I'm like, who am I to say, or who are you or anyone to say that get so up in arms about this thing? If his family signed off on it. And I'm like, I, I, that's where I kind of come down on this whole thing is like, and I get that the same thing happened in the flash with, you know, the Christopher Reeves likeness and, and, and shit like that, which I fucking hated. I, I agree with that, but I just felt like in the flash, it's like, that's just such a, masturbatory weird circle jerk of multiverse bullshit that had nothing to do with the story that I'm like, I don't, that to me was just kind of, and it looked awful where I thought this looked a little bit better than that. But I, I don't know. I come down on if the family signed off on it and it serves the story. And I think here there's an argument to be made that you could have gone a different direction where you didn't need to use his likeness. And that is the fan service kind of stuff that, you know, you need to call back to that first movie instead of calling back to the second movie because Lance Henriksen was already in AVP and kind of maybe diluted his importance in the franchise or whatever. Um, but I don't know. That's, kind of where I come down on the whole thing. It didn't bother me that much 
because uh, I didn't even think it it looked not great, but it because of what I mentioned with it being an android, not a real person, not a real boy. Um, I I wasn't as upset about it. So I don't know. I I just think it's weird when I don't know. It's you, people get really upset about something, and I'm just like you're not his if his his family signed off on it i'm like you have no fucking idea what those conversations were at the end of his life or anything like that and even if he didn't have those conversations sure but i mean the person that's going to be making your decisions i'm like he's passed away when i'm fucking dead i don't know my family can no one's going to want my likeness i know that but like (laughs) um i I just unless you i think It'll be an interesting conversation, I think, moving forward for other actors and other people seeing more stuff like this happen because it will become more and more common that, you know, Robin Williams, there's that whole rumor and that he was ahead of the curve where in his will, he put like, I do not want you to use my likeness in anything after I pass away. Um, Unless like, I know Disney recently did it in that short film that they did, but it was archival recording so it wasn't anything like recreating his voice or recreating his image as the genie uh they just but used that's past such recordings. a shitty loophole um, though too like that's such a like a it's like oh well he said specifically i don't want to use my likeness or anything but then yeah. disney comes in and they're like well you know what we can because we own this uh, we own you know, these recordings, recordings and it's not necessarily i mean disney is basically um, the Wayland yutani company i know of with some world. of the things that are uh, yeah <laughs> i mean i get that but like i was some of the other stuff that's i i understand but anyways that's my stance on the thing and i will let you give the opposite side of it yeah my, my stance is that look if if you're if if you're doing it now, like in terms of like, if the person's here, like if someone like Jeff Bridges, who signed off on it for the Tron movies, he's here, yeah. he's of sound mind. That's fine. That's, I still don't think it looks good. I think it looks awful. I think it's something with de-aging with, with recreating uh, younger versions of, of yeah. like, let's, let's give it up. Let's, this is one thing that technology has not, mastered in any way and i agree with you we don't know the conversations when it comes to like what ian holmes estate you know talked but 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 there, there's this weird thing because you know we we just came out of a, a an actor's and writer's strike and part of the actor strike was talking about ai and was talking yeah. about you know compensation and and things like that and and you know, you look at what happened with Peter Cushing in Rogue One. You look at what, you know, you mentioned um, Christopher Reeves. I, I think, I still think that's bad. But the thing with that that maybe makes it a little less egregious than this particular case is that the character is not integral to the plot. You know, like it's just a quick cameo where with Peter Cushing and with Ian Holm, you have these characters that are being reinserted into the franchise and you know it's like that's where it does feel like grave robbing to me like where like you know if if these things were discussed before someone's death and i think this will now have to become a conversation for a lot of people that are either a part of a franchise yeah or going into a franchise in terms of negotiations and contracts because you know taking somebody's likeness is not great, but then also making it a quote unquote performance, like the crediting in, like I, I, I went on IMDb and I looked at how they gave him the credit. Cause it's in his acting credits. It's not him. It's not yeah. him. It, and I mean, that's the thing. That's it's like the, when someone's photos used in something, they would put them, or I don't know, like, I, and yeah, well, it would say like some, archival footage, or like it would say like, fo- like photo. But but he but is this performed is, this is by someone named it. Daniel Betts. Yeah. Yes, but but they're still giving him an acting credit as well, and so it's it's like it's well, it's not it's not Ian Holm, so it doesn't it doesn't count. It doesn't like that. It, it doesn't matter. Like it's so despicable that they're like let's like you know, bring back this actor who died in 2020 and, you know, narratively make him an integral part of the film. I mean, he's mostly exposition, but, you know, he plays a part in terms of Andy's 
sort of arc and going from somebody that, um, you know, is, is kind of, uh, malfunctioning and, you know, past his prime and, and, and expiring. And, and, you know, there's a new generation of androids that are being brought in, um, to now kind of becoming kind of a quasi villain. You know, the, the company is the most important thing in terms of priorities, yeah. So it, it is important to the narrative. You know, if this was like a cameo or something like that in the way that I'm not saying Peter Cushing, but obviously, you know, Carrie Fisher was still alive at the point when Rogue One came out. So, you know, when they bring in the young Leia at the end. Sure. It's like a very quick tie in back into to a new hope. It's fine. If it was something like that, I would still have a problem with it because he's dead and he doesn't have a say. And even though his family did, it's still not coming from him and and so like I, like my question is a lot of people don't know who ian holm is like especially younger people yeah you know like maybe they do maybe they do just based on the lord of the rings yeah you know but i wonder if, if it was a hunger games movie or a batman film if they did the same thing with heath ledger or philip seymour hoffman yeah if there would be more of an outcry or more of a criticism towards that. If they're like a main part of the movie and yeah, I I don't, you're making a good point. And because also they're, they're, they haven't been, I mean, Ian Holm hasn't been dead that long, but they are actors that are in, that are still very much in the consciousness, like that are, that are still talked about and, you know, and, and revered. And so like, if you were to do that for, for, for a Dark Knight movie, bring back the Joker, bring back Heath Ledger's Joker, quote unquote, or Philip Seymour Hoffman for another Hunger Games movie. I think there would be more of a criticism and a pushback towards it. But because Ian Holm has, you know, he, he kind of retired. Yeah, um, after Ratatouille or whatever. Like, well, he was no, he was still working after Ratatouille, but um, like he, the last, I thought he like, didn't really do much after that, like other than the Hobbit movies. And yeah, because like the, the the Hobbit films were the last, like the the, uh, Where the he five played armies. Old Bilbo, yeah, was the last thing he did. Um, so he hadn't been in a lot, but but you know, in the in this, I mean, he was worked with everybody from you know, uh, Martin Scorsese to Terry Gilliam. It, yeah, it, I know, I but I, I understand actor, but, what but, you're but saying. He's, yeah. But he's a character actor, right? So, totally, and he's also a character actor of a certain time. So I think like a lot of people going into this, like I remember even. Um, the cast of this movie, some of them didn't realize that there were more alien movies before Prometheus. So, you know, like, I honestly do think like if it was somebody that had passed away, that is more, more in the cultural zeitgeist. Of yeah, things or more that like it if it was Chad, if they brought back Chadwick Boseman, sure. there would be I a think huge people, fucking yeah. problem. And I think yeah. that criticism still applies here it's just that ian holmes not a big name and you did talk about like the idea like okay well you know because the android is damaged and it's a a, kind of almost supposed to be like an animatronic and like a yes cheese that's what i was thinking that's why freddy's kind of yeah um you know like and for me get away with it in that way it's it's i think that's kind of why they think they yeah i think that's why they think think and that's why i wasn't and it's weird because we're on opposite sides of i liked that it was integral to the plot and that's why you would use that character and things like that and um but then we've talked about it like lance hendrickson who is alive could have done that role who yeah. you could have done the a switch up works still you could have done a switch up where lance hendrickson who was a good android in aliens um you could have done a switch up of him being a more company focused you know, Rook, uh, sorry, Ash uh, kind of android style thing and could have flipped that on its head Which a little he does bit and played the around. End of, end of yeah. Alien 3, right? Yeah, or so is... I mean, you could have you could have done that and it, he's alive and could have done that role. So like, I agree with you there. It just didn't bother me as much. I don't want to focus like too much on that, but that was like a big part. It's hard not of, to, like, especially when it is a big part of the movie. I get it. I just don't want to, I think people get it now, but like, I just kind of, um, other things like the get away from her, you bitch line. I wanted to like reach into the screen and my eyes rolled back the same way. I know. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. Johnson's did in this movie. The Andes. It doesn't make any Um, sense. I do like you brought up that. I agree with that. It doesn't make any sense. I hate it. Stuff like that. I, I think 
referring lines that come later in the timeline, but like the audience knows it and you almost like wait for a cheer. Like it's like this, I don't know. I, I hate it. That is It terrible. even almost was waiting um, for a cheer. The way that's what I mean. Out. No, yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. It just, I hate it how it's set up. I don't like it. Um, I do like you brought up the eyes rolling back in your head. I do love all of the Andy stuff in the movie. Like I think that character very good. is is very he's very good, and I think the character is the most interesting part of the movie. I like some of the lore building of how the androids work, of like resetting them and putting a different chip, and then he gets the memories and all the things from 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 the Rook character, and like and be able to access the ship and all this kind of stuff. Like um, I, I love everything with Andy in the movie. I agree with you that and I like him. You know, He's just like, there's something very charming yeah. and kind about his face and the way that he cheers up rain with the dad jokes yeah. that makes yeah. him endearing. And I then when it, yeah. he turns, there's something as well about like how he can change. I mean, it's just, it's great acting, but yeah. there's just something about like his posturing that changes and the way that, you know, he reacts or interacts with the characters because you, you are very sympathetic towards him, especially with one character that kind of treats him horribly. And I do think there is almost like a, a, a racial metaphor going on there, yeah. with the way that there's this kind of back and forth and, and, and again, like you learn why the character is like that with him, but then you don't care about why the character no. does that, even though you should care. I agree. The All the secondary, lost. I wanted to like Isabella Merced more. I li oh like, and she's, you, I hate that. Soon. That's the last thing I want to kind of go into. I don't think there's much else to talk spoiler wise for the, like, again, it takes a little while to build up, but I liked all the kind of setup. But the, the logic flaws, I think like, begin to build up because you have like even the, the changing of temperature. In, yeah. That in doesn't rooms. make any sense. But again, I go, where were it's the other movie, aliens, who cares? right? Yeah, and that's the I other agree. Thing, where the aliens, it's like they were all there to begin with, but they didn't come out until almost yeah, I know. late. In Dude, the film. all of that shit. You're right. You're right. You're right. I get it. I just yeah. didn't give a fuck. Like sometimes it's like I saw Osgood Perkins answering some stuff on Reddit, and he's just like, you know why I did it? Because it's a fucking movie. <laughs> it's yeah. Like I don't like it. Doesn't sometimes he's like, don't think too hard about something because you won't enjoy anything and i'm not giving movies an excuse for because it can take you out of a movie i get it everyone's different um sometimes you see something and characters act so fucking dumb or it doesn't make sense where it takes you out of the movie and you can't enjoy it i just personally went i don't i didn't think about it while watching it and i even thinking about it after i go i don't know there's a bunch of fucking xenomorphs running around killing people i'm like i i don't know how the world works do bullets shoot as fast when fucking there's no zero gravity. gravity. I don't know. The acid uh, fucking thing uh, was kind of cool. The zero gravity acid scene is kind of cool. And so I don't like, disagree with you. I I, I yeah. think the problem is if you don't like the movie or if you're not vibing, oh, with it, you then you're going to notice it and it's going to bother you. And I know yeah. that. And that's why I'm, I'm being a total hypocrite. I'm sure there's certain movies where I've latched on to logic flaws and different plot things where I'm just like, if you're not vibing with something, those things are going to piss you off or they're going to bother you. Right. But yeah. when you are engaged and you are enjoying it, and that's why this is ultimately all subjective. But the last thing I want to bring up in spoiler territory, because I do got to wrap up because I am about to go on vacation and I got to post all this shit. Um, I'm a jet setter, Eric. Um, I, uh, the last act is what I want to talk about. So yeah. we talked about I Isabella Merced, who's literally just there to set up the last act and her pregnancy and all of that stuff is very silly. And a final kill. And, and like, yeah. And it's just, it's all set up for the Prometheus tie-in of getting the DNA <laughs> of like, of the big rubber boys and like using it as like a way to advance humans, which is what Waylon Yutani is trying to be been doing with the xenomorphs and blah 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 so there's some lore from the franchise i don't mind there's some score on top of, yeah, from yeah. the franchise when um, the prometheus theme comes up, i did like, I, I i did like that <laughs> but like i was like oh it's prometheus there we go um i bet everyone loves this and then, um and then you get the birth sequence and then you get this xenomorph rubber boy hybrid or human xenomorph and 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 space jockey hybrid well because also um, you learn that she's pregnant in yeah. one of the most clunkiest lines of oh, dialogue I know. it's so and you know what it also was I, again this is, this is bad where um the line like when when because 
Isabel Merced is basically in the in in the ship for most of it. Like, yeah, she doesn't have much to do. No, and so she's lying down, and and Kaylee Spaney comes her and, and it's like, oh, I'm not feeling well. It's like, oh, you're sick because she threw up. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. And so when someone throws up, you know, she just holds pregnant. her stomach. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, it's, it's like, silly. it's like, who's the father? Oh, it's some guy you don't know. And I thought the blind man. Oh yeah, God, <laughs> the turkey baster's back. Gross. Um, um, but but when that happens, that scene is supposed to be disturbing and gross and weird. And I was like, oh, this is like not even close to what, you know, Ridley Scott did in Prometheus with yeah. the C-section removing of the squid boy. Um, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, that was out. cool. And that is memorable. And that is gross. And, and that, that is creature weird. is interesting, right? Where this thing, I already fucking hated those rubber dudes. And then you get this. You get the Waluigi again. of space jockeys. Yeah, which is a great line. <laughs> yeah, it's this skinny, skinny rubber boy, not a beefy rubber boy. And he's kind of got a xenomorph tail and legs and shit. And it's just like you just introduced something that looks way less cool and way less threatening than a xenomorph. And that's going to be your, or the right. queen or anything like that. And that's going to be your final boss in this movie and the final set piece. And I, I know you think it's gross because it was, you know, the birth sequence and it's this fucked up. And I get that it's supposed to be like Waylon Yutani has been experimenting and it's they're fucking failed and they they tried to advance humans, but look at this abomination that they fucking That's what happens created. when you get AI to and do like, it. Yeah, and it's <laughs> just like, I get that that's kind of the point, but then when I'm looking at this thing, it's not scary looking. It just looks stupid. I just didn't love the, it is a wild swing to take, but I'm like, the xenomorphs are so cool and so threatening looking. And like the face huggers and the xenomorph, that combo is so fucking awesome. And then you're like, you introduce this thing and then have this final sequence that, yeah, it calls back to aliens and, and, and everything. And like, it's, I don't know. I really was like, ugh, I don't like this final act. I, I forgave a lot of the earlier stuff because I felt like I was having a good time. Yeah, the kills weren't spectacular or anything, but like I was having a good time. I was engaged in the story, even if I wasn't like incredibly invested in the characters and stuff. But um, that final act, really, I was like, oh, no, I really don't like yeah. this at all. And, then, and it's like, not fun. It's, it's, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's backloaded. And then like you're saying, I think the problem here is is that H.R. Giger's design is the greatest movie monster yeah. ever. The xenomorph is perfect. And so if you are trying to up that, you can't. The James Cameron was very smart in working with Giger again and and creating the queen design because it's like that final design, it's like you built upon what was there and created something new and exciting with this. It kind of feels like you just left a, a space jockey out in the sun and let it kind of melt and just turn into a raisin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bring it back in. Yeah. Um, and, and so when you're comparing the greatest movie monster design to anything else, and you think in the same film, you can up that good fucking luck because this thing, whatever the fuck you want to call it, does not work whatsoever. Yeah, I agree. And this is also where, like, it started to remind me quite a bit of, like, even though it is an alien movie and it's alien licensed and things like that, it felt more like an alien knockoff at that point than an alien movie. Where, like, you know, after Alien came out, you got films like Creature and Paul W.S. W.S. Anderson's Event Horizon and yeah. even something I like, like Leviathan all these movies are knocking it off and it feels almost like a dollar store knockoff of an alien movie at that point or Pandorum. If you remember that film with Ben Foster and Dennis Quaid. Um, and so like that, it felt closer to that than it did an alien movie. And so when you're watching that final act, it's like, this is what you were leading to. Like, this mm -hmm. is, this, this is it. This, this is, this is your final. Yeah. You I mentioned, know. Uh, Waluigi is the final yeah. boss. <laughs> yeah. Which no Mario game ends with Waluigi as the final boss. So yeah, I, it really left me with a sour taste in my mouth, but ended on positives on my end i do like the face hugger stuff in the movie like i thought the first sequence of them in the water was cool and then that other sequence where they had to quietly go through yes logic aside of 
the temperatures and which is that. tremors too there's a scene in yeah, tremors yeah. too where fred ward has to do the same thing but and freeze himself and walk through. sure yeah which I, it, it, I i thought that was all cool I, I again i like some of the action beats i think again from a production and sound design um standpoint i think oh i love uh, i love those little immaculate. buggers yeah, but yeah but um i just think that in general the movie like i really yeah. like like i mentioned the lighting the fog and just like it, yes. everything felt the opening scene practical. feels like it's yeah. the opening of jurassic park oh god yeah that was cool yeah i like you, you know like yeah. all, that i i'll agree with you on all of that like i think the production design throughout this entire movie is great i think um the, the, the conversation you already mentioned it in in our spoiler free section but i think it's important to say that you know there there is a lot of practical work but there is but a lot, still of, a lot special of effects visual, visual effects, effects post-production yeah. visual effects that and those things need to work together. together. Yeah. Yes, and they do. And they are well done, except for Waluigi and some of that stuff. But even yeah. like the, the aliens, like they they, they work all look well. Really and, great. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like I think Fadi Alvarez, I think he's more of a craftsman than he is a great filmmaker. And I think that's why like a lot of people are excited about this movie after having watched it because there is a feeling of like someone like Denny Villeneuve I th- who think is a, is, is a better filmmaker but he also understands the tactile quality yes, of things yeah. where like Fede Alvarez is doing that same thing where you're you're watching this it feels like you're watching something in terms of the production design not so much the cinematography it's very kind of slick looking still um but the production design feels very much of yeah, you know the antiquated technology, the 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 viscous quality of it all. It, it feels like you're going back to the 1970s. Yeah, and like real 80s. sets, right? Even yep. though, yes, it's it, um, embellished with uh, you know post production effects and, and and special effects and visual effects. But like, I um, yeah, it, I thought it was immaculately crafted in that way. So yeah, you know what? You got two very different opinions. Go uh, listen to Eric's or watch Eric's Rogers review as well, because I'm sure he goes off even in a more condensed way there. Yeah, and also um, tiptoeing around Ian Holm spoilers as well, so, and stuff. Yeah. Where I thought we'd argue more here, but I think we both understand where each other's coming from. It's just yeah. like like anytime we really disagree, it's like yeah, I get what you're saying. It's just like I think ultimately it worked for me, and obviously uh, it didn't for you. So. Um, let us know what you guys uh, thought. Either send us a tweet over on the hellscape of X. Um, uh, you can use Grok too to make a xenomorph and a and a predator kiss or something. I don't know. Um, have you seen oh, all these AI images yeah, that are coming out? It's gross. I hate well, it. Um, again, I hope we're we talking about AI. The, I, know, AI I know now about this and and that, and it's just like you know, I, this is the world we live in now where I think for actors, especially like it's going to change how oh, yeah. people go into. I mean, he's getting sued. Stuff. Disney Nintendo is going to sue that guy. Cause like Good. you can't be making Mario with he like, sucks. A, with and I hate that, that he's background. autistic yeah. too. I yeah. hate it because it's like, he's, he's one of these bigger guys that like has a platform and people will think like, yeah. Oh, well this guy's a jerk quote unquote, because he's autistic. And it's yeah, like, I know. Fuck, fuck him. him. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> That was Alien Romulus, guys. Uh, thank you all for listening. We really, really do appreciate it. Please go check out our letterbox, which is untitled underscore movies. Um, and you can follow me on all those social medias at Matt Rohrbeck. Please go check out all of Eric's uh, new interviews he has up on the channel as well. He keeps uh, pumping those out, doing really, really great stuff for some smaller um, kind of films and, and things like that that aren't big, you know, Waylon Yutani um, uh, productions. But um yeah i uh and then i also want to say that we will have a tiff conversation soon i promise i know we used to do that more often but i think now um we just rather do like a big tiff preview that will come out basically a couple days before the festival or a week before the festival we're trying to still uh, nail down timelines but we will do our big tiff preview where eric and i will kind of go over what we think you guys should check out at the fest or what's the biggest films and it looks like it's going to be a good festival this year. A lot of really, really good uh, or uh, potentially good, like exciting movies. Like I, I was saying to Eric uh, offline being like, there's not like something where I'm like, if I miss that, I'm going to cry. But like it's uh, there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, ooh, I do really want to see that. So uh, I'm excited for the lineup this year and we will do a big TIFF talk, TIFF preview episode uh, very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Hell yeah. Uh, yes. And, and, and I honestly like – um an interview that'll probably be up around the time you're listening to this is uh with india donaldson for good one uh 
had a great conversation. Like I felt like it was kind of coming close to like something that I had with um, Matt Johnson. Oh, cool. Uh, with Blackberry. Yeah. And, and it's always nice when you have those conversations. Um, and yeah, and you, and you can find more of my uh, video reviews on Rogers TV.com slash cinema scene. And on all those social medias, including Twitter, I refuse to call it X yeah, um, yeah. Uh, at EM six, two, one, one. Uh, X is going to give it to you, and until next time... I can't lie to you about your chances, but you have my sympathies. Game over, man! No one said that. Bye, everybody. I'm surprised they didn't. (laughs)